Their line goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, rejoicing as a strong man to run a race. He is going forth from the end of the heavens and his circuit to the ends of it, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect, restoring the inner being. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and simple. Lord, we believe. We believe in your testimony. We believe in your word. Lord, we thank you that this is a day that that you have declared thousands of years ago to be good. We submit ourselves to you. We submit ourselves to you. There's a sing in my voice. There's a song in my praise, pushing back when the darkest weapons form. There's a power on my lips, even death can't defy, when the name of our God is lifted high. Hold on a second, we're going to restart. <laughs> What's going on? So that was the the practice round, and now that we're all ready, we planned that. We actually planned that. It was part of the, all right, and back to the one. (laughs) So let's sing, there's a sling in my voice. There's a sling in my voice, there's a stone in my face, pushing back when the darkest weapon. There's this power on my lips, even death can't defy, when the name of our God is lifted high. Cause there is resurrection power, we sing the name of Jesus, resurrection power, we raise a mighty sound, come on let the praise get loud. Make that empty grave resound, cause there is resurrection power in his name. There are days I have seen filled with heartache and loss that have buried my heart beneath the wave. But every time his praise breaks out, dead things rise up from the ground. I won't leave my soul inside that empty grave. There is resurrection power when we sing the name of Jesus. Resurrection power when we raise a mighty sound. Come on, let the praise get loud. Make that empty grave resound. There is resurrection. Come out of that grave when we sing. Captives, let go of those chains. Let go of those chains when we praise. Dead men, come out of that grave. Come out of that grave when we sing. Captives, let go of those chains. Let go of those chains when we praise. Dead men, come out of that grave.
down every lie, set the wrong things right. Cause when you have your way, something has to break. Something has to break. Something has to break. Right now in your name, something has to break. Something has to break, something has to break, right now in your name. Something has to break, something has to break, something has to break, right now in your name. Something has to break, something has to break.
we're going to sing a song that's um, from a few years ago. It's very dear to me. Um, but for me, it was going back to a, an early time in my faith. I think a lot of people feel that way, a connection with this song. So I just invite you to uh, really receive what the words are saying. I'm going back to a heart of worship. What does that mean? It means it's not what it's looked like before or what it's been looking like the past year or two years or even two weeks. But I invite you to ask the Lord, Lord, we ask you, what does it look like to go back to a heart of worship, of true worship to you? When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's a way that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it when it's all about you. It's all about you.
a moment when the lights went out and death had claimed its victory the king of love had given up his life the darkest day in history there are the cross we made for sinners for every curse his blood atoned one final breath and it was finished but not the end we could have known for the earth began to shake and the veil was torn. What sacrifice was made as the heavens roared?
We shout that from the rooftops. When I, when I was in my lowest place, you said, I still want you. He said that about each one of you. In your lowest places, in your highest places, he wanted you just the same. His is a true love that gives you a choice. He wants you whether you're choosing him right now or not. So Lord, we say that any areas of our life today where we are not choosing you, we are not saying all hail to the King of Kings. We give them to you. We ask you to show us, Lord, where do I need to surrender my life today to you? We thank you that you are a God of true love, which gives each of us a choice. And we thank you that you choose us regardless of what we do. So we ask to honor you better today. That you would convict our hearts to honor you. Because we want to we wanna look more like you. I want people to look at me and say, is that Jesus? Oh, that's, that's Vivian, yeah. <laughs> Lord, we choose to follow you. We honor you today and we thank you that worship continues as we listen to a message. And I pray that every heart here will be, will be turned to you, that the ears of our hearts will be open and ready to listen. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we give a, a hand to the worship team? <laughs> Love having the mother-daughter combo up here. And if you guys don't know, this is Terry and Brooke. I don't know if we've announced their names before, but they're awesome. <laughs> All right, so I have a few announcements. Oh, <laughs> a few announcements for you guys before we get started. Um, as you know, with our website, we've got the calendar, so um, please check that out for any events going on this week. And uh, just a reminder, you can sync the calendar to yours. So if we cancel something on the calendar, it'll cancel on yours as well. Um, so it's a really handy tool. Go ahead and check that out on the events page. Um, welcome to everyone. We did a welcome in the beginning, but welcome again online. And for those of you who missed uh, our, our first welcome, we're so glad you're here. Um, if there are any guests in the house today, uh, we would love to give you a welcome bag. I know that there's some really good stuff in there. I might snag one because I don't think I ever got one either. You mentioned that last week. Um, so if anyone has, has never gotten one before, you're welcome to grab one. And uh, we'd love for you to fill out the blue card uh, so that you can get connected with our 411 emails. Uh, tithes and offering can be dropped in the same box in the back, and then um, you can also submit on our website. So if you go to the website and click the Give tab, you can, you can give through that as well. And you can also give by texting GIVE to 805-275-2525, um, and then you can save that number to your phone, and anytime you want to give, you can just text GIVE and whatever the amount is, and it'll automatically take it out of your account. You don't have to do anything else once you set up. Okay, and so do you guys remember this past couple of weeks we've been giving to Tender Life uh, Maternity Home? Um, we just want to say a big thank you to everyone. Uh, we raised um, about $2,000 to give to them. Um, and I think that's really key in this time that we're supporting women that, that want to be in a better situation and need help. Um, so thank you so much for your gifts. And if you in the future want to continue giving to them or even want to serve there, um, please email us and we can connect you. Um, and we have a couple other things. Um, if you like outreach and if you like connecting with the community, uh, we are in need of some volunteers. The Catholic Social Service Food Pantry is in need of some volunteers. So that's going to be this week on Tuesday and Thursday. 
um, from 9 a.m. till noon. So it's just three hours of the day. If you'd like to do one day or both days, um, let us know by emailing events at fountainfoursquare.church. And then where are the ladies at? <laughs> Yeah, ladies. I feel like when we say, where are the guys at? There's like a one little low grunt in the back. But the ladies are always screaming out. <laughs> so we have a, um, a creative night. It's uh, going to be called Whisper. The Whisper team, are any of you involved in that here or have been in the past? Well, guess what? You have a chance to start this month. Um, on August 24th and the 31st, we're going to be doing um, a creative night. And um, it's best if you come to both nights, but you don't have to. So don't feel like, oh, I can't go because I missed the, the 24th or I can't go the 31st. You can come to, to either one or both. Recommended is both, um, but it will be 10 to $15, um, and the, the art supplies will be provided and snacks. And if you would like to um, learn more about that, you can talk to Julie. She, if you would stand up, Julie, she's got a sign-up sheet. Uh, the only thing is you do need to sign up ahead of time. So you can do that by signing up today, or you can email us as well, and uh, we'll get you connected with Julie. Okay, so that's it. We've got our declaration now. If everyone would stand up. Ah, declaration number two. As we receive today's offering, we are believing you for heaven opened earth invaded, storehouses unlocked, and miracles created, dreams and visions, angelic visitations, declarations, visitations, and divine manifestations, anointing, gifting, and calls, positions and promotions, provisions and resources to go to the nations, Souls and more souls from every generation, saved and set free, carrying kingdom revelation. Thank you, Father, that as I join my value system to yours, you will shower favor, blessing, and increase upon me, so I have more than enough to co-labor with heaven and see Jesus get his full reward. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, and if um, if you guys could join hands, we're going to welcome Pastor Larry to the stage. Good morning. I got a speaker. What's that? <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna drop it. We'll put it up on top. Yeah, I'll get this. All right, we got a little house moving around here, but uh, we'll be with you in just a moment. Feel free Talk to greet your neighbor right now. So all that stuff. We're good. All right, we're going to, can you help me put this up here, Dennis? Dennis, can you help me lift it up? Oh, sure. Put it up so everybody can see it. All right. That's good. Yeah, I think so. You guys can see that. Yeah. Whoop, flying papers. All right, good morning. Good morning. I haven't talked to you guys in a while. It's been since before Christmas, or after Christmas, actually. You're all looking good. Hello, those online. All right. Tim's in the house. Give it up for Tim. Woo! Debbie's in the house, two of my favorite people. We've, we've known them since they made that song 22 years ago. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I'm going to pray for you, I think. That'll be good. Why don't you stand for... I'm going to pray while you... If you don't mind standing, that'd be cool. Right on. Father, hallowed be your name. We give you thanks and we give you praise. We enter your gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. We enter your courts with praise. 
Holy Spirit, guide us. Holy Spirit, reveal to us the heart of Jesus. His love and His grace. Holy Spirit, transform us into the image of Christ by the renewing of our mind. Open the eyes of our hearts in order that we may receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we may know the hope to which you have called us. To know the riches of your glorious inheritance that we may know the power of your mighty strength which raised Jesus from the dead and is seated in heavenly realms. Lord, increase our faith, increase our grace, your grace over us, increase your love over us. Father, we adore you, Jesus, we will worship you. We fix our eyes upon you, Lord. We rejoice in your presence. We rejoice in your glory. We rejoice in your grace. We rejoice in your love. Increase your peace, which transcends all our understanding. Guard our hearts, our mind. Holy Spirit, lead us into all truth. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I could just stop right there. <laughs> you guys could have a seat. Thank you. Oh, man, so good. So you heard from a pastor a few weeks ago. You heard from a teacher pastors they're all loving and gracious and all that and teachers like to put things in order my daughter Amy's not here so that's a good thing it's not a good thing but it's a good thing because I'm not like a teacher so I, she likes it in order and Josh does like things in order I don't do that I kind of as you can see the board is already whacked out so but I like to uh speak from my heart and speak from what God is doing inside of me and what I see from the, if you will, a boat, a crow's nest, looking out and what the Lord is saying and doing in the earth and in our body and in my life and in our lives. And just to encourage us, to equip us for the work of the ministry so that our ministry is out in the marketplace where you work, where you live, where you go to eat, where you go to shop, where you go to recreate, all of those places. So we just want to be equipped and, and, and prepared for what God is about to do. You know, in that when I was praying in hope, hope is a confident expectation of what is about to happen or what God is about to do. And so we, Jesus talks about that, is having hope. Scripture, Jeremiah talks about, come to give you hope and a future and a hope, right? Amen. I saw these quotes. I've, I've read them before. Um, what you need to know will keep you from what... What you know, excuse me, will keep you from what you need to know if you don't remain a novice. Bill Johnson quotes that a lot. Learning and growing, always being willing to, to know more about Jesus. Josh talked about the more last week the more of Jesus, why and God wanting to give us more. If you do it, let's see, here's a good one. If you do before you get it, what you would do if you had it, you'll be sure to get it. That's a weird, that's an interesting one. If you do before you get it, what you would do if you had it, you will be sure to get it. That's a Graham Cook likes to talk about that one. And here's one that I think is interesting, and this has kind of hit me. It's like, okay, this kind of puts us in perspective where our world is today and us as believers growing in the things of God, the more of God, so that we can be ambassadors in the kingdom. We can be reconciling people to Christ, which is our, our job description, really. People who know nothing in depth commonly assume that their opinions are the same kind of thing as knowledge. People who know nothing in depth commonly assume that their opinions are the same kind of thing as knowledge. We don't want to have an opinion about Christ. We want to have knowledge about him. We want to know him intimately and be able to express to others who Jesus is. That they, when they're with us, they're in the presence of the Lord as well. 
Amen? So those are some things that just kind of put out there to think about that I like to uh, start with. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the board here and see where we end up. Um, this was like part one. I'm going to speak in a few more weeks and then part two. I'm really excited about part two. Okay. Part one is really going to be good too, but part two, I think you're really going to like. So you're going to have to come back. <laughs> Oh, uh, man, I, I, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of, um, what's the word, uh, overwhelmed with the Lord, with what the Holy Spirit is doing. It's interesting, um, the song that we sang this morning, Bring Your Heart Back to Worship, that's like 22 years old, 1999, that song was, and, I, and, and worship and sound and all that kind of stuff is really a big, a big deal in the way that the Lord has me bring the kingdom and talk about the things of the kingdom. And that song was one from uh, Matt Redman, and I was I read Matt read Matt Redman's books, and this was one of them that had that song, and it was just kind of sitting with me, coming back to the heart of worship, but what God is doing in the earth today, and where we're about to go. And so it was really cool. I I didn't know that was in the set list that we were going to do this morning, and then when I saw it, I'm like, oh, that's really great. I'm really like the Holy Spirit. Like I'm I guess I'm tracking a little bit in tune with that. And then she reads Psalm, <clears throat> excuse me, she reads Psalm 19, which is, <clears throat> which is in my notes here today. And it's also, a, you know, everybody, you all have your own, the scripture that's like your foundational script, like this is the one, this, is, this one speaks to you, this is the one I go to, this is the one. Well, Psalm 19 is it for me. The heavens declare the glory of God. So anyway, so I kind of think we're on track for where, what the Holy Spirit has really wanted to speak to us. So I'm really confident in that, knowing that, that he has a word that is, is being released in the earth, not just here, but in other places. So a lot of this is confirmed for me in other places as well. So anyways, um, I want to review a couple things that we've done before, because I think it's really important as we go forward in, in this we're talking about this morning and where we're going to get to. So let's see. We talked about God calling us and, and I had a, a really cool um, statue that I was going to, br- that I thought I brought. <laughs> it was going to be sitting right here and uh, I'll bring it next time. But it's, it's basically shows um, Walt Disney. This is a gift to me. is Walt Disney pointing out like this and Mickey Mouse is right here holding his hand. So if you can picture that and he's just pointing out. It's like the Father and us walking with him and him showing us what he's called us to do and where to go. It's, it's an amazing, cool little thing, so I'll bring it next week, next time. But, um, but it's a calling up. So the Lord is calling us up, right? He's calling us up. He's calling us out. And some of you who play hangmen know this, right? forth. We've t- I've talked about this before. He's calling us up and out and forth. That we need to be thinking about and really focused on who, what Jesus is speaking. Lou Engels talks about, and he's been talking for quite some time, about a great revival that's coming. And, the word, and revival's not even in the Bible, the word revival. But at the harvest, a great harvest. We like the word revival because it really, it, it, I don't know, it's exciting. It sounds even more exciting than even harvest. But if you're a farmer, harvest is really exciting. Yes. <laughs> right? That's like, yeah, all this hard work, everything we've done, now we get to harvest it. And so I believe that the sound in the earth that, that, that the Holy Spirit is releasing is, is when you see all of the fear and lies that are in the world right now. I mean, it, that is, that's the sound of the marketplace. People are afraid. People are hearing lies all the time. But in the kingdom, the truth that God speaks, we need to be listening to the sounds of the Holy Spirit and what's coming. Because you can see how a great revival of harvest for people that are seeking the truth Believe me, they're going to just get, people are going to get to a place that don't know the Lord and just like, even those that do that aren't really walking, 
You're going to be at a place where like, oh, I can't take it anymore. I can't take the misinformation. I can't take not knowing what the truth is. My life is this. My, my money is going and I'm fearful that I'm not going to have enough because they don't have the foundation of God the Father being our provider who provides everything that we need. They don't have that. And so calling us up, out, and forth is to, as kingdom believers, sons and daughters of God, we are able to bring peace and bring revelation and, and reconcile people to Christ because of who he is and our ability to say, I'm going to partner with what God is doing. Does that make sense? So that's that calling up, that great, and then the great revival I put here. And then I talked what last time about black sheep. Now, it's a bummer. I, the Richies sent me a really cool little black sheep. So I'll bring it next time. I had it in the bag. I, I'm not sure if my granddaughters saw this and took it <laughs> to play with. They may have, they may not, but sometimes that happens when I set it down and then it's like, where'd that go? But um, I don't think that's what happened. I think I just dropped it. But I will bring it next time. It's a cool little sheep, and it would have been sitting here with my other statue. But anyways, but black sheep, we talked about that last time. What are they? The shepherds have what? Let's just do it, break it down. If they have 1,000 sheep out there, they'll have 100 black sheep. And each black sheep, We'll rep, uh, let's break it down even easier. There's 100 sheep out there, then we'll have 10 black sheep, or one black sheep for every 100, excuse me, getting it confused. Every, one black sheep for every 100 white sheep. And the reason that the shepherd has that is so that when he looks over his flock, he's looking for the black sheep. And the reason, then he knows, oh, hey, that's the, actually the picture of... <laughs> Thank you, back there. Very cool. <laughs> That's the statue. So looking out and over, that, that God has so much more. So he's looking out, and he's looking for the black sheep. And black sheep know who they are. Their, their, their um, wool cannot be changed. You can't dye black sheep. Okay, they cannot be changed. They know who they are. They're the black sheep. It's a good thing. You know how it always had the bad connotation of black sheep in the family? Yeah, well, not in the kingdom. In the kingdom, the black sheep is, well, that's, that's the one that the father is looking for because you're overseeing the, the realm, the, the ecclesia that God has placed you in and you're connecting to him in intimacy so that you can minister to those around you. So black sheep are so important. And I just, I, I bring it up. It's probably kind of a life message for me. It's just that we just get to know who we are. It rides on our identity. And our identity is in Christ. And that identity, then he shows you who you are. And if he speaks, this is who you are. The best thing to say is yes and amen, because then we get to move forward. We get to come up out of what we think we are and move forth in what he has called us to be. Amen. And then we go through what? Double doors. We talked about pathways. New pathways. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so let's put up that, um, the, my new pathway. <laughs> I'll give that little story first. Okay, so about, I guess, uh, almost a month now, it seems like, uh, I went to Idaho. I got to drive to Idaho. My daughter lives up there. And um, so I decided to take my boat, and I decided to take my two, my two granddaughters, uh, Amy's two daughters, wanted to go visit their cousins. So Papa says, yeah, okay. Let's the three of us drive to Idaho. It's like 21 hour drive. So I did like three days. I, I drove to uh, uh, St. George the first day. They loved it. They got to swim in the pool at the hotel. The next day we drive to Idaho Falls. And then we drive from Idaho Falls to um, 
Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So this picture was taken. I'm driving, pulling the boat, by the way, and the kids are in the back. So I'm taking this picture. <laughs> Probably should have had my eyes more on the driving. But because I'm kind of nuts, I like to look at clouds. Now, everything is a sound, and so God has voices, many waters, and there's water and clouds, and it's an, an expression of heaven. Things happen in those clouds. Now, some are just clouds. So like at the very bottom of that picture, you can see they're just clouds, regular, whatever. But after that, then you see the angelic visitations. And sometimes I see things that I don't, I have never seen before, and other times I kind of can recognize. But the line that goes straight across, that's a jet, so don't worry about that. That's just uh, a contrail from a jet. But the rest of it, and you can go to the next one. If you look, this is a pathway. It's kind of interesting, too. It's the road. And this road was from Idaho Falls to Butte, Montana. So each morning, Papa puts on his favorite driving music, which is country, western. Come on. That's God's music when you're driving. And, and the station was the highway. So I almost started to get my cowboy accent going on the highway, listening to my music for two hours. When my granddaughters are like, Papa, can we watch a movie? It's like, no, Papa gets his two hours <laughs> of his movie, of his music, before we watch whatever movies you guys want to watch. And so going down this road, as we entered, we we're getting closer to uh, Butte, Montana, which I had never been on these roads before. So that drive from Idaho Falls to Butte uh, is just in my, just a beautiful drive. Now, maybe it just spoke to me because I got, you know, I wish I was a cowboy and grew up with horses. But I did see some real cowboys herding some cattle on the way. So that was really cool, too. And we saw a herd of uh, horses. Don't know if they were wild or not. But anyways... But this began to speak to me going down the road of a new pathway, going through double doors and going into a new place. I was going to Idaho. I've never been there before. And as I go in, here's an angelic visitation just opening up a heaven scene. Look at the possibilities that I have. So going down a new pathway is so important that we learn new things to where God is taking us. Old ways won't open new doors. Old roads won't take us to new places. It's okay to look back on things so that we know where we've come from, Pastor T, Steve, to where we're going. But where we're going is so much more, so much more of what God has for us, right? Amen? So yeah, so then I, I took the picture, and then my two hours were up, and then we watched The Great Race movie the great race and then they watch mad mad world so which the great race have you ever seen that anybody yeah. it's a great movie it's my favorite favorite movie so but i didn't get to watch it i had to drive but i could hear it so i know all the lines in it and all that <laughs> uh let's go to uh romans 2 it's probably good to open the bible huh Romans 2, Romans chapter 2, or excuse me, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. we may prove in this scripture being conformed being transformed proved what is good and acceptable perfect will of God a lot of that is through worship and intimacy allowing that worship to come out of your innermost being and then we turn over to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23 and 24 And be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you may put on the new man 
which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Renewed mind. Come on. And then we'll turn over to uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 16 and 17, which is a I've read this many times, you know it. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen? New creation. A renewed mind. Being transformed. This new pathway. Recognizing our identity as sheep. Black sheep. God's calling. He's looking for those black sheep. All right. (laughs) So with this new creation, let's get something going here. And a renewed mind. I draw this. I don't know if this is going to look very good. That's, That's supposed to be like an ear. Yes, yeah, so that you can hear. This is like an ear, sort of. Not a very good looking ear, but you can, you can imagine your own ears. <laughs> it's not a very good one. I'm not that good at drawing ears. It's kinda, that's kind of weird, isn't it? It's got a hole in it. That doesn't go very good. Let's see, it'll go like that. That's a little better, kind of, sort of, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I do better with creativity where I just throw paint on the paper and see where I never colored inside the lines. I always mess that up too. <laughs> Sweet. All right. I love it. Okay. So let's go to Genesis 1 1. Let's uh, pull this back in just so I can I don't know where I'm going to go here. Kind of giving you some background stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily following right down a pathway because I'm sort of reviewing some things we've talked about before because we're going to go somewhere else. So we actually are going down a pathway. It's just there's a lot of things we're looking at as we're going. Maybe that's a good way to describe it. Genesis 1-1, 1 to 3 actually. It's right at the beginning of the Bible. All right. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And then there was light. So we have the Father. Then we have the Holy Spirit hovering, vibrating, And Jesus speaks and all that vibration, all of those particles, everything that's going just takes shape and form by the sound of his voice. I mean, just think about that for just a second. The sound of Jesus's voice holds the universe together. We're held together by the sound of his voice. So we get to, when we're a new creation, right? And we just read that scripture. We still are a new creation. So if we're a new creation, that means we can hear the sound of his voice. Others can see it. They may not recognize it. They call it different things, higher powers, um, whatever. But eventually, if they're really seeking, they'll be, they're going to know it's Jesus. It's the sound of his voice. Say it so all. All what? All things? Say all things if you don't mind. All things are held together. Even the rocks. These are rocks. That's right. The rocks. I'll pray rocks. That way we know rocks. Even the rocks cry out. 
the clouds cry out. This this board <clears throat> isn't even solid. It's a sound. <coughs> it's a sound. These are all sounds. If we turn to Zephaniah three seventeen, which is one of my favorites. It says he sings over here. You got it up there? Behold. Oh. No, that's not it. 317. Uh, I usually have it marked. I apologize for not having it marked. Talk some amongst yourselves. <laughs> Come on. Who has? Let me. <clears throat> yeah, I know. I usually mark them. Hack them. There it is. Got it. <coughs> Excuse me. The Lord your God in the midst, in your midst. The Lord your God in your midst, in our midst, right now. The mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you, over us, with gladness. He will, <clears throat> he will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. That, that scripture will preach for about three hours. So he's singing your song. Everybody has their own unique DNA. You have a strand that's uniquely yours. He's singing that right now. He's in our midst and he's singing that. That's very, that's extremely comforting and powerful. And if he stops singing us, we vaporize. So I'm glad he's still singing <laughs> because otherwise we wouldn't be here. But it's so powerful because he is singing So we are, uh, let's go blue. We are a song. And it's, he's glad. Think about that for just a second. Let that set in. God is glad about you. He really is. If we mess up, his mercies are new every morning. So we can get through that. But the real, the bottom line is he knows who you are because he created you and he loves you. More than you can imagine, think or imagine, or even understand how deep his love goes. And the fact that he's singing our song is amazing, which then means we might be instruments. Think about that. All right, what's, uh, what else we got here? Okay, I'm doing good. All right. Let's go here. All right. So all of these examples of what we're talking about, who we are, we're a sound, we're a song, we're black sheep, we're new creations, based, okay? Christ in us, we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. I think, in fact, I know as the Holy Spirit is preparing for this great harvest and revival that he is calling his people to really know who we are. Because when people come in or when you meet them, you're going to be the instrument of truth. No pun intended. You're going to be the instrument of truth, revealing who Jesus is to set that person free and bring them into the kingdom so they can become all that they've been called to be in God. Amen? So It's so powerful. All right. So let's go to where we where I kind of wanted to get to this morning. Um, let's turn to Matthew chapter 20, verse 21. 
So, uh, so anyway, so Jesus sit around and he's talking about his death and resurrection and his disciples are there. Some of his other uh, followers are there. James and John's mother's there. And um, so in verse 20 of 20, chapter 20, it says, Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus, came to him with her sons, kneeling down and asking something from him. And he said to her, What do you wish? And she said to him, Grant that these two sons of mine may sit one at your right and one at your, uh, one at your right and one at your left in your kingdom. Now, <laughs> you got to kind of picture this. Now, I'm not Jewish, so I can't really get it the real Jewish way that, that it would be spoken. But this is a Jewish mom. <laughs> and I grew up with, well, my, two of my best friends were Jewish, so i kind of been around it. But... <laughs> And there's two versions. It's interesting because uh, the second version doesn't talk about the mom. It just talks about the two James and John going over there. And that was in Mark. And I think Mark probably wanted to be a little nicer maybe or he wanted to be more get James and John. But, <laughs> but the mother of James and John go up and she says like a good mom, hey, you know, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, like my boys, these, these two guys over here, you know, they've been good boys. They followed you. Can, like, they be on your right or your left? All that kind of stuff. Can, like, what do you think? Like, but she does it nice. I mean, she bows down and, and asks him. And Jesus is like, what, what do you want? What do you want from me? And, and, and as we go through the story, I mean, Jesus at the end, he says, uh, uh, my, my right hand and my left hand is not for mine to give, but for those whom it is prepared by my Father. So Jesus is really smart. He doesn't want to upset her because he wants to honor the mom. But he says, like, hey, if it was up to me, yeah, you know, probably. I mean, think about it. It's not up to me, though. See, it's my father. It's his choice. So he's really cool about passing it right on over <laughs> so that the mom didn't get upset. She's like, oh, man. So then she's going to have to go talk to God. So it's like, well, maybe she can't really do that. So nobody's seen his face. So it uh, kind of ends that nicely. So I, I just love, Lance Walno does it really good. He, he really, <laughs> he's got the accent down and the whole thing. But, but I just love the story because in the Jewish culture and in that time, what that mother understood was proximity. She understood proximity. If my two sons get to be on the right and left, they're going to be right next to Jesus. They're going to be near the nearness, they're going to be near the king. Think about that for a minute. The proximity. In, in medieval times, they had a guy who was called the hand of the king. So he spoke for the king. He was like the right hand of the king. So he had immediate proximity. We know that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. And we know what? We are seated in heavenly places with him. So we are seated and we have this proximity. But I don't think that we think about that very often. Because what does proximity give us? It's, it's what we gain in that proximity. First of all, there's nearness because we're close to the king. So I've talked about creating that space. In that space of nearness, you're near the king. There's a space created for you and Jesus that you and the Father, the Holy Spirit, that you can, Scripture says what? Draw, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Okay, we often think that I've got, I'm going to do this and then he's going to, oh, he's going to respond to that. It's not like that. He already is He's already here. He never leaves us. So the nearness is really us drawing close in proximity to him. Oftentimes when we're walking, he's, he's always with us, but it's like we're kind of over there. Or maybe we're in, the, in that part of the room and he's still with us. He hasn't left us, but he's kind of over here. And you're saying, Jesus, I want more. I want, I want this and I want that. And he's like, okay, I'm over here. So then you, if we, we stop and look, think about that for a second, well, wait a minute, I, that's right, I, I need to go draw near 
so that I can hear and have that proximity. I can be in proximity to him. Yes, he indwells in us. We we know that. But we still have to be conscious of what we're doing and how we're communicating with the Lord. So drawing near in proximity creates a space that we now can have intimacy with him. So it creates, it also creates, so we create a space. So we got proximity. I probably should have wrote that word down. Make sure I spell it right, right? Prox. Right? I spell it right? Okay. So there we create a space. We also create, when we're thinking about proximity, time. Time with the king. If we spend time with the king, if you're hanging out with a king, you get to see what he's doing. And you get to hear what he's doing, and you get to learn, and you listen, and he, you see him speak things of the kingdom and love that you would go, I, I, I would never, I, I'm not going to say that to that person. But Jesus says, no, this is how I would handle this. But because we're creating space and spending some time, we begin to understand why he does what he does. And not even sometimes why, just that he is doing it, and I need to step into that. I need to step and speak the way that Jesus would speak about this in that situation to that person. I need to step over. We've used the chicken line. I need to move forward, going forth. Yeah? So then, um, nearness in relationship. So we have relationship. Okay. And to the... The king. So we gain so much by proximity. That mom knew that if she could get her two sons at the right and the left hand, those guys would have access to the keys of the kingdom. But Jesus said, I give you the keys. Because we're a new creation, we have the proximity. We have the ability to be in that space, to spend that time to create, to cultivate the relationship. Amen? You gain power, we gain wisdom, and we gain presence. We get to be in the presence. We think about the presence of the Lord. So those are, proximity is such a a major deal that even the mom was like, you guys aren't going to ask. I'm going to get you. Proximity. <laughs> that Jesus is so cool, isn't he? It's like, oh, it's not up to me. <laughs> it's going to be my father's choice. So everything's a sound. Okay, cool. As we go forward, uh, next time I, we get together too, I'm going to talk about the sound and us as how that relates into the earth. I don't think that believers, some do, people more, more so people that are involved in worship, but I, I don't believe that so much that believers are really realize how sound is so incredibly powerful and, and directs us the things that we listen to, the, the things that we things that we speak. When we say a prophetic word to somebody and we speak that out, oftentimes we're, we're hearing a sound that's coming off of them and it's resonating with the Holy Spirit within us and it resonates with our being. We're a tuning fork, by the way, to the sound of the Holy Spirit. Our body can, resonates with the voice of God that we see and hear and then all of a sudden we speak a word and if for the receiver, if it really resonates, it may be something that God has already been speaking to you and wow. But it's, it's, he's singing your song. He's singing who you are. He's singing what he's calling you to be and, and where to go and, and somebody recognizes it. That's why, that's why the Lord wants us to prophesy. 
That's why the Lord wants us to see people the way he sees them so that we can speak those things. We can look at somebody and say, oh, man, what I see coming off of you is just like, oh. I, I, I feel peace and I feel wisdom. And God is saying to you that there's, you're a man of wisdom. You're a man of peace, and that is you. That God is, is calling you. No, there's nobody behind you. I'm looking right at you. <laughs> but there's peace. There, that, that come, it, it's, it's coming off of you. It's speaking. And God says, I want to take you to in a greater place of peace. I want to take you to a greater place of wisdom in places that you haven't been. Because he's calling you to minister in the marketplace to people that are going to be, need some real amazing help with fear. Maybe even in the finances. Will you be able to speak that wisdom of financial help that will give a peace to somebody? So God is, is he's just all about love and all about that sound. So when we get together next time, we'll, we'll definitely go into more of this. Since we're in Matthew, I just want to point out in, in chapter 18. So, so read into what I want to talk about in a minute. Chapter 18, verse 19 and 20. It says, and again, I say to you, say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything, they ask and it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered Together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Jesus is in the midst of us. We're gathered together in his name. And I'm going to go into more detail about agreement and unity and what that really, what that really means for us and what the expectation would be. But that's that ecclesia that we've, have been talking about and using that term ecclesia. Everybody know kind of what that term is? It's the place where in the Roman times where Jesus took the disciples and said, on this rock, I'm going to build my church. And he was speaking of the marketplace of the ecclesia that was there where they, where they uh, did laws and, and people got together and, and there was all kinds of horrible stuff going on. So basically it's a marketplace. But we are ambassadors to that marketplace and we carry this ecclesia where two or three are gathered together in his name that we can declare the kingdom of God in this place. When I was on my way back from Idaho, I had my two granddaughters again and their dad, Josh. So we're driving back and we get to Idaho Falls and so we go to Applebee's for dinner. <laughs> and, uh, and so Josh... He does this to me all the time. He knows that I can, uh, that God has gifted me with seeing tattoos on somebody and be able to prophesy about the tattoo and just start to get words of knowledge about them and all this kind of stuff. So just something the Holy Spirit does. And so I'm like, this is cool. So he likes to see, when he sees somebody, here comes the waitress. And of course, she's got like three or four tattoos. And I'm like, he's not going to do this, is he? It's going to really, <laughs> and sure enough, you know, he just kind of, oh, those are some really neat tattoos. And I'm like, oh, he's just setting this up for me to have to <laughs> say something. And I'm like, you know, it's too, too, I'm an older guy now too, you know, um, and this is a young waitress. The good thing was I had my two granddaughters and my grandson because he was right back. So it didn't, it wasn't like just one or two guys wanting to say something to a waitress or they wanted to make a weird thing out of it. I'm like, okay, Lord, I, I have no idea how I'm going to... He's already talked about, you know, brought up the tattoos, but I don't really have to say anything if I don't want to. So you're going to have to show me kind of how, how I would be able to even approach opening up the kingdom to her. And so, <laughs> so she comes back, and I kind of forget what, how it all went, and I was like, oh, yeah. And he's, there he says it again about the tattoo thing, and she's like, oh, yeah. And I said, oh, yeah, so what... I go, this is kind of, I go, I don't want you to feel weird or anything, but I kind of, 
I kind of know, I kind of want to share with you what I think those tattoos mean. If that's okay with you, you know. And she goes, oh, yeah, sure, great. I was, so, I mean, just, <laughs> Holy Spirit just, like, gives her all this stuff about who she is. And, blah, blah. and my, my granddaughters, like, they step right in. They go, oh, what's your favorite food? What's your favorite color? You know? <laughs> so she's all, you know, so the little ones are, like, and one of my granddaughters, Hannah, she's like a prophetess already. So, so she's already seeing into this stuff, and she's, like, helping me right along. Because, like, this is great. Okay, cool. The little ones are setting it up, opening it up. And so we shared minister to her. And she, her, she, I said, I said, do you go to church? You believe, you know, do you know who Jesus is? Oh, no, I believe in a higher power. And I said, oh, that's cool, awesome. So then we shared with her, and she went away. She came back. So I, w- I put the re- the bill, and I just put the regular tip on there. But then I gave her money. I gave her like 50, I gave her fifty dollars. Said this is for you. And she was like, what? And I said, no, I'm I'm going to invest this fifty dollars in your life. I said the things that 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 your tattoos revealed about who you are and what you're going to do and where you're going and she was a leader you know, just capsulize everything this this young lady was going to be a leader people follow her and and so then she starts getting a little bit teary-eyed and i'm like oh okay where'd everybody go i'm not going to be standing here by myself and uh but i said i'm investing in in you as a father i'm i, I see that the things that that god has for you and i said by the way i said that higher power, I said, that's Jesus. So maybe you'd want to check that out. She goes, oh, okay, I will. And that was it. But the ecclesia of Christ, two or three gathered in his name and recognizing, saying, okay, we're going to do some kingdom business here and we're going to set this girl free. We're going to help her out. Amen? So wherever we go, we have that ability. Josh knows that I... He's done this on golf courses too, so it's crazy. But he knows there's a giftedness in me that God has given to me. I know there's giftedness in him. If you're with somebody else and you know it, and you can, you can set them up. <laughs> a good way, right? You can, you can erase that chicken line for them. But guess what? We were together. There was, there was more than just me. Two or three gathered. So we, we were there for one purpose, to share the kingdom, open it up for this young lady, that hopefully, that I'm sure that's going to change her life. All right, so we only got about a minute, but I'm going to kind of set up for next time. Um, go over here. I did remember this, so that's good. We are all black sheep, or I hope that we want to be those black sheep. Entering the pro- in proximity for what the Holy Spirit is speaking to me about proximity is accessing it through worship. Because there's a sound that's coming, or it's already being prepared, and it's been over years. But through worship and through the sounds that his, God's people make in unabandoned worship, kind of like King David, only more. We sang the song earlier, bringing our heart back to, the, to worship. That was, a, that was a specific time because of what was going on, but it's, it's evolved. We've come to a place where we're getting close to a big harvest and it's going to come through worship. People are going to come to this ecclesia here this church body and see people abandonly, unabandonedly worshiping God and, and not know, understand why, but you'll be able to share that with them. That's what the Holy Spirit is calling us. Because you're a sound, because you're an instrument that Jesus is singing. I want, if you picture an orchestra, okay, if you can just picture it going to Hollywood Bowl and you see the big orchestra there, right? And there's all this hustle and bustle going on before they start. Uh, tuning, rustling papers, stuff like this. Everybody's, you know, they're all seated all around looking in one place. But there, there's all this stuff going on, preparation, right? And then they hear this. And all their eyes are fixed on one person. The 
the Black Sheep Orchestra, <laughs> the Black Sheep Symphony, the Black Sheep Combo, tri Trio, all waiting for one thing, the downbeat from the, from the conductor, who is Jesus. This revival is coming through the sound of worship and us getting in proximity to the king and tuning our instruments so that when he does this, we pay attention. And when he's here, all our eyes are fixed because he says, now go here and do this. Minister this way. Hear my voice, watch me conduct the flow and the rhythm. Amen. <clears throat> it's amazing. But this is a time in our, in our lifetime <clears throat> where the Holy Spirit where sound is be of the God and his voice is permeating the earth in ways it never has before. And we need to be in tune and ready. We can be getting our music in line, our intimate time with him, but as even as corporately and also individually, we're here waiting for this. And then we respond in unity. All eyes are fixed. We're all positioned to see the king. And we're all in proximity to see what he's doing. And so the encouragement is to, to enter that space and that time and be prepared. Amen? Amen. So I do have an extra one. So I'm going to give this to Vivian. <laughs> Since she's the leader of our worship here at the church. But I want to encourage you, the next time we come together, on a, it's next Saturday, next week, I'll, be, I'll speak, I think, on the first Sunday in September, but that we're coming with that expectation to abandonly worship God and then see what happens. <clears throat> because he wants to take us to places we haven't been. Amen? So, Lord, we thank you for this morning. You are an amazing, amazing, loving father. And man, we just want to be part of that black sheep band. <laughs> Orchestra, combo, rock band, whatever. But we want to bring the sounds of heaven and the kingdom of God into every place that we go. And that we're mindful of you as the great conductor. So Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for this morning. Yeah, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Give it up for Terry. She did a great job. Wow. Amazing. I love it. And you guys have a great day. We'll have uh, people up here to pray with you if, you if you do need prayer. Boy, go and have a great Sunday.